Okay, so this lesson will be focusing on key vocabulary that you need to know when it comes to sentence structure. So this week and next week, we're going to be focusing on sentence structure. We're going to learn about three different types of sentences. There are actually four different types of sentences, but we're going to learn about three for right now. They are simple sentences, complex sentences, and compound sentences. But before we can even get into any of that, we need to review a few key vocabulary terms and concepts that are important to know before we get started. So the first is subject and predicate. So the very first word here is subject. And the subject is who or what the sentence is about. It's basically the character that we're writing about or the person in the sentence or maybe the place. Um, that is what the subject is. So in these examples, the dog chased the ball. The dog is the subject. Jacob stood on his tiptoes. Jacob is the subject. The car turned the corner. The car is the subject. And Kelly twirled in circles. Kelly is the subject in this one. Next is the predicate. And the predicate, the definition is the action which completes the subject. In other words, it's what the subject is doing, or actually I should say the action the subject is doing. <coughs> Excuse me. The action can also be referred to as the verb. So in these sentences or these examples, the dog chased the ball, chase the ball is the predicate. Stood on his tiptoes, is also the predicate. Turned the corner is the predicate. And twirled in circles is the predicate. We did some independent practice where you had to identify the subject and highlight the predicate. So Stella had a lot of fun on the slide. Stella is the subject and had a lot of fun on the slide is the predicate. My sister loves going to the park. My sister is the subject. Loves going to the park is the predicate. I cooked lasagna for dinner. I am the subject and cook lasagna for dinner is the predicate. She waited in line. She is the subject. Waited in line is the predicate. The yellow ball bounces really high. The yellow ball is the subject. And bounces really high is the predicate. So you got the idea, right? Um, then what we did in class was we completed each sentence by adding the missing subject or predicate. So for example, this one said, Dr. Miller, my next door neighbor, and then it allowed us to complete the sentence. So in this example, we are actually given the subject and now we have to fill in the predicate. So you could say something like mowed the lawn or cooked my family dinner. The next one, this is actually a typo, so you could delete that. It says made me a cheese and banana sandwich. So this is the predicate and now we need the subject. So I could say my mom made me a cheese and banana sandwich. Until further notice, blank will be handling all office business. So we have the predicate, but we need the subject. So the subject here could be I or another name. As the fans watch breathlessly the football blank. So we have here, we have a descriptor here, and then we have the subject, which is the football. So now we need to come up with the predicate for the football, an action that the football is doing. So we could say flew in the air. The children, despite being told to be on their best behavior. So we have our subject, which is the children. Then we have a little descriptor here, a modifier, which tells us what they've been told to do. And then we need to come up with a predicate for them. So the children, despite being told to be on their best behavior, drew on the walls. Blank flew a plane today for the first time. So we have a predicate. We need a subject. Bob 
and the old barn owl in the backyard. And then we need a predicate so we could come up with um, hooted loudly. In the next one, we created 10 sentences, and this one was kind of fun. So if you would like to, you can create 10 sentences on your own where you pause this and you create 10 sentences, or I'm sorry, you look at this, not pause this. Uh, you look at this and you create 10 sentences based upon the information that's given. You can add in different words, you can change the form of a word, but if you would like to pause this video, you can do that now. One thing I really want to show you and talk about is complete, simple, and compound subjects. So here we have two different sentences. We have my mom baked a cake and my mom baked a cake. Those are the same. And then you have another one that says my mom and my sister baked a cake. So I want to talk to you about what complete, simple, and compound subjects are because you do need to know those when you do IXL and it may also be on our quiz. So for this one, the complete subject is my mom. It's the entire statement of who this sentence is about. The sentence about my mom, we've highlighted my mom. For simple, you want to find the smallest identifier that you can, the smallest word or words that you can use to tell who the subject is about. And in this case, it's mom. You don't need to know that it's my mom. You just need to know that it's mom, that that is the subject. So mom is the simple subject. And then compound is when you have two or more things or people that you're writing about in a sentence. And so you'll notice that you have my mom and my sister baked a cake. So in this example, it's my mom and my sister. That Those are the compound subjects because there's two things. I do want you to know oops, that a compound subject includes and or any other joining words. So it's not just m mom and sister. It's okay to put my mom and my sister. I also want you to remember that compound joins two things together. So think of like compound words like homework or backpack. You learned compound words probably in like second or third grade. A compound subject is similar to that. It's two or more things joined together that the sentence is about. Here's another example. My cousin Allison flew to Florida. Pause this right now and see if you can identify the complete, simple, and compound subjects. All right, let's see how you did. So for the complete subject, it is my cousin Allison. You can have that entire thing to say who the subject is. For simple, again, we want to choose the smallest identifier that we can. So Allison is the smallest identifier. It doesn't matter that she's my cousin when you're talking about the simple uh, subjects. And then for compound, it's my cousin, Allison and Christina. It's their names. You, again, don't need the fact that they're my cousins. It's just Allison and Christina. And again, you have that and that includes... Um, the subject or any other joining word like or or maybe nor or but um and i also again just a reminder compound words join two things together just like compound subjects do now let's talk about complete simple and compound predicates here's our sentence again my mom baked a cake so the complete predicate is the action the entire action that she did she baked a cake. For simple, again, for a simple predicate, we want to find the shortest um, or smallest amount of words that tell us what my mom did or what this person did. So in this case, it would be baked. And then for compound, we have my mom baked a cake and made the frosting. So she's done two things. What are the two things that she's done? Well, she baked a cake and she made the frosting. You'll notice here that the compound does not include and it doesn't include any of the modifiers. It just tells you the actions. So for a compound predicate, you have to choose just the actions. You're not choosing the entire thing. 
that's different from compound subject. So what I'd like you to do is pause this and see if you can come up with the complete, simple, and compound predicates for this example. All right, let's see how you did. So in this example, the complete predicate is flew to Florida because that is the complete action. For the simple predicate, we want to find the simplest word or the fewest amount of words that we can use to describe the action. And in this case, it would be flew to Florida. And then for compound, we have my cousin Allison packed her suitcase and flew to Florida. And it is packed and flew. So if you remember, we just want to make sure that the compound predicate only includes the actions the subject does, not necessarily everything else. It's not important that she packed her suitcase and where she flew. So you just have to pick packed and flew.